All right, let's try a slightly more complicated line charge problem. Um, so this is similar to one, the second problem that was set up in class. Um, and in fact, it's uh, right out of chapter 26. I've just changed the X and Y coordinates um, from page 759. And they explain it, but they don't really um, explain how the integration works. So I'll um, just work through the whole problem here. Um, so we've got length L for our charge. It's positive. Um, one thing is that this point is on a plane that bisects the um, the um, line charge in perfectly in half. And that means that on this side, every single point along this side is going to um, create a vector moving off in this direction. And each of those is going to have a uh, x component going to the right. And on this side, they're going to have an equal x component um, vector going off to the left. And so the x, uh, the x direction will cancel out, and you'll end up with an electric field at this point that is um, uh, pointing straight up. So all we need to do is examine the um, y component vector of the sum of all of the charges from this field. Okay, so I have this problem set up a lot like the last one. Um, we have our little sliver. We have x prime, dx prime, dq prime, and uh, I've defined our variables here. So the um, at this point, the charge, um, the electric field that's caused by this little point here would be written as um, DE is equal to uh, KQ, oh, K, uh, DQ prime over R squared. And r squared is going to be um, y naught squared plus x prime squared. Um, yeah, just that by itself. Okay, and then we want to look at the um, component vector of this. So the, uh, the upward component vector of this, um, we'll use sine and the sine of theta is going to equal um, y naught over, and I'm going to write this um, rather than square rooting it, I'll put it to the one half power because it, it's just easier for me to do the math that way. So I'll say y naught squared plus x prime squared to the one half power. Okay, so we're going to place this down in here. And remember, we're just doing the y component. And so this becomes times y naught over y naught squared plus x prime squared to the 1 half power. And when I combine this together, I'm going to get k and I'll replace the dq prime now with uh, lambda dx prime. k lambda dx prime, y naught, over. And when I multiply these two, I add the exponents. So I have 2 over 2, which is 1, plus 1 over 2 is 3, uh, 3 halves. So we get y naught squared plus x prime squared to the 3 halves power. OK, and this is what we're um, charged with integrating. So here's what it would look like. Uh, we can pull out k and lambda and y naught, because y naught's a constant, right? No matter where we are along this, the um, y naught component is going to be the same. So 
will integrate. And the other thing that we can do here too, by the way, is instead of um, integrating over the entire length, why not just integrate over half the length and then multiply it by two? Okay, so we'll make this two times k d. Oops, I didn't want to bring that. K uh, y not. Oops, sorry. K lambda y not. And then uh, what's left on top is just dx. So we end up with one over y not squared plus x prime squared to the 3 halves power dx. And um, this is not really solvable using traditional methods of integration. Oh, this is over um, from 0 to L over 2. Okay, but there is another way to look at solving this problem. What if instead of integrating over the change of x, we integrated over the change of this angle? And so we can integrate when this angle is 0, when x becomes 0, the angle becomes 0. And then we can integrate over when uh, theta reaches its max. To approach that, we're going to have to rewrite this entire equation in different terms. So I need to come up with um, a way of rewriting dx, because I need to get rid of dx, because I want to write this in terms of d theta. And I also need to come up with a term to rewrite this um, 1 over whatever it is here. So let's play around with a little bit of trig and see what we come up with. I can do um, the uh, tangent of theta, and remember it's kind of backwards, uh, is going to equal opposite over adjacent, so it's going to be equal x prime over y naught. Okay, and so I'll um, uh, I'll bring the uh, y over by multiplying both sides by y, so I get y not tangent of theta is equal to x prime, and nice. Now I can take the derivative of x, and this is remember y over, uh, y not is a constant, so we could just carry it over, and the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Okay, and then remember that theta now is a function because it's changing, so it's a variable. So we also need the derivative of theta. And, and then y naught is just a constant. And that equals dx prime. So now we have a new way of writing dx prime. And now we just need a new way of writing the other part of this equation. So if we look at cosine of theta prime, cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent being y naught. So we end up with y naught over um, y naught squared plus x prime squared uh, and the square root of that. So I'll just say to the one half. Um, now remember we're trying to get this. So that's to the three halves power. Oops, and this is equal. So what if I took this whole thing and raised it to the third power? Okay, I'm going to do that and I'm going to do another step at the same time distribute this third power to the y, and I'm going to also move the y to the other side. Okay, and then our equation will look the way we want it. We'll get cosine cubed theta prime over y not cubed, right? Because I just multiply this side of the equation by 1 over y not, or 1 over y cubed not, and I do the same thing over here. 
and then that equals 1 over x, oops, let me keep things in the same order here, y naught squared plus x prime squared to the 3 halves power. Okay, so now I have this here can be rewritten as this, and then the derivative uh, of x prime could be rewritten as this. So let's take that and now replace that, replace our old equation with these. And remember now, we're not integrating between 0 and L over 2. We're now integrating uh, between 0 and theta max. So our new equation will look like this. Um, dE in the y direction is equal to 2k alpha y naught over the integral from 0 to theta max, which is called theta m, is equal to uh, cosine cubed theta over y naught cubed times, and I'll just take a quick look back over here, y naught secant squared theta times y naught secant squared theta d theta. And those thetas were primed just to remind us. Okay, so um, this y naught and one of these y naughts cancel. So that cancels, this goes to 2, and remember that uh, y naught is a constant, so I'm going to bring it to the outside, okay? And then uh, you'll end up with y naught, uh, one y naught on the top, and then uh, y naught squared on the bottom. And so um, this one will cancel out, and you'll end up with 2k lambda, that one cancels, one of these cancels when it gets brought out, and we get y naught. Integral from 0 to theta m of cosine cubed, this is gone now, that's gone, times secant squared theta theta uh, times d theta. But look at this. What is secant squared? Well, secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. So, um, so I'll get cosine cubed over cosine squared, which is cosine uh, to the first power. So let me just move way over here so I have some space. So we had our 2k lambda over y naught times, and we ended up with the derivative, we ended up with cosine theta d theta. Well, what's the derivative of cosine? It's negative sine, right? Times negative sine theta uh, d, th uh, and that's, evaluated from 0 to theta max. Well, we know what theta max is, right? Let's look up here at our picture. Theta max is when um, the sine of theta max is L over 2. It's when this goes to its maximum point. Okay? So, uh, and the sine of 0 is zero. So we multiply this by zero and we get zero. So we get 2k lambda over y naught um, times L over 2 over, and the hypotenuse of that is going to be um, y naught squared plus L over 2 squared. And that'll be square rooted. Okay, and then uh, we can further simplify this by 
um, plugging in uh, for lambda, we have uh, Q over L, right? So we get uh, 2 K Q over L times L over 2 over Y naught times the square root of Y naught squared plus uh, uh, L squared over 4. And this cancels with this 2, and this L cancels with this L. And so in the end, we are left with K Q. Uh, over y naught times the square root of y naught squared plus l squared over 4. And if you look in chapter 26, you'll see that that is also the derivative um, that they came up with for the answer. Um, so have fun with that.